Yeah, so basically today there are marches taking place in cities across the UK under the banner of March for Europe. And what we want to do is to send a message to our elected representatives that they need to make sure that before Article 50 is invoked, there is a vote in Parliament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that when they vote, they need to think in the national interest in the long term, not just the immediate kind of electoral uh, returns, and vote to stay in the EU. Like the environment. Complete absence of talking about that at all, as if it somehow didn't matter. And of course, no, no big surprise really, because we know that also the other reason that wasn't a good democratic exercise was because people aged 16 to 18 were not allowed to vote. And no issue matters to them more than the environment. Because they're the people that are going to have to live with a degraded environment. Wherever they take us, we, as Europeans, marching, tens of thousands of people today, here in Cambridge and cities right across the country and in London, are saying one thing, we are Europe, we march for Europe, we want to work together with people across national boundaries for a better future and not look inward. Have a great march today, I'm sorry I can't be here, but I'm going to tell them down in London that I was here in Cambridge and I bring a message from Cambridge, one of the, the principal places in the country that voted to remain. Have a great day. Thank you.
made a difference. <laughs> and I needed to get involved. So that's what we did. We saw, we, we began Cambridge Days and we got involved this way. And now other people have taken on the mantle. And what we want to do is give Cambridge a voice. We want to say, this isn't what we want. This isn't what Cambridge wants. Cambridge is an inclusive, multicultural, outward-looking community. And we want to Welcome friends, welcome to this great rally, a great turnout and thank you for joining thousands and thousands of other people across the country who are making the same point together today, to take a stand, to send a very clear message. We are European and we want to stay in the European Union. Now, sadly what we have seen and has become clear is the ugly side of the country that was uncovered, the rise in xenophobia those horrible, horrible messages in Huntingdon. The sense that people were being told to go home when this is their home. Absolutely horrible. That dream of a Europe of nation states working together for the common good, resolving disputes through democratic discussion and debate and compromise, rather than war and conflict. That great hope that the horrors of two calamitous wars in the last century. That hope that we put that behind us had somehow been set back. And in my view, the debate before June the 23rd had been far too narrow, far too instrumental. What we needed was more passion, more optimism, more enthusiasm for what the European Union has actually achieved and can go on to achieve. Our geography, our culture, our history is inescapably European and we should be proud of it. I don't just want Cambridge in the United Kingdom to stay in the European Union. Friends, I want us to turn this around and work with our friends and partners across the continent to build a better Europe. Together we can do it. Thank you very much. Yeah. ...is uh, going to give an important perspective for Cambridge, um, one of uh, researchers. Um, so I'd like to welcome to the stage Andrew Steele from Science is Vital. everybody. <laughs> I am Andrew Steele and I am a research scientist. To be precise, I'm a computational biologist. Obviously science is something that's very important to Cambridge and to the rest of the UK. And scientists are a group who are particularly concerned about the outcome of the EU referendum. So I want to give you a few reasons why. Now the UK is a great place in the world to do science. With just one percent of the with just one percent of the world's population and three percent of the GDP, we produce fifteen percent of the world's high impact research papers, as measured by the citations from other scientists around the world. But that great success is on the back of our membership of the European Union for several different reasons. The first and most obvious of these is funding. We spend about £150 per person per year on public funded research in the UK and about 10% of that money comes from the EU. In fact, we win when it comes to science. Our government pays in £12 per person to the EU research budget and we get £15 back. So our science and research is great within Europe. And this is doubly important because the UK government is actually reducing the amount that we spend on science within the UK. We spend less than 0.5% of GDP on public funded research here, which puts us at the bottom of the G8 and we're below average within the OECD and even within the EU taken as a whole. So this European money is especially important. Now, these aren't just abstract percentage of GDP. I also run a campaign called Scienceagram, which tries to make sense of how much we spend on science. To take the example of cancer, Cancer is a disease that kills nearly a third of us, and yet we spend just £2.80 per person per year on public funded cancer research. Now I think that's crazy. I think if there's a disease with a third chance of killing me, I want to spend more than £3 a year trying to work out why. So anything that's a threat to science funding, anything that's a threat to science funding I think is a threat that we need to counter. The Leave campaign have of course promised to make up for the shortfall if we leave the EU, but They've made this promise to loads of other groups as well. And if the vast majority of economists are right, we're going to have a smaller economy with which to fund these promises. So this is very, very important stuff. But it's not just about the funding. It's also about international collaboration. EU grants enable European researchers from across the continent to work together 
and get money that can fund cross-continental collaborations. So if I'm in a UK research group and we want to collaborate with some researchers in France and some researchers in Lithuania, we can collaborate under the same coordinated funding from the EU. That's just something that's extremely difficult to achieve outside of the EU model. There's also freedom of movement, which is vitally important to the way modern science works. I work in a lab of about 15 people. There are 10 different nationalities represented. My colleagues come from all around the world and all around the EU. And not having to fill out a load of complicated visa paperwork allows us to do what we need to do, which is to recruit the best scientists wherever they are in the world. I'll try not to fall over. Um, thank you, Andrew. Um, next up is um, Lord Richard Balfi, who's uh, from Cambridge Conservatives and a former MEP, so he might have some quite interesting things to say here now today. The most important thing we have to do is to remember what unites us. The fact of the matter is that had it been left to me, there wouldn't have been a referendum. Yeah. There was. Um, but I also regret a lot of the way the referendum was carried out. Project Fear never inspires people, it frightens people. But the case for Europe, as we all know, is a moral case. It's a case for working with neighbours, with friends, with other countries, helping people to work together. and building on cooperation. Frankly, if it does cost this country a few million pounds, we are a rich country. Go to Eastern Europe and you will see that we have a moral duty to our fellow European citizens. Which they have to also realize, and they do, that many of us deplore the results that came out and we look to them also to put forward constructive demands which make it clear to the government why they can't have the little England they want and why we all have to work together in the future. to go on for some time. What I will say is this, one vote cannot end our historic relationship. There has at some time to be another vote on whether or not we accept what comes out. Brexit cannot just mean Brexit, i.e. whatever they do to us, we get back and accept it. And what we have to do is keep this campaign alive across the country to make sure that across the parties that there is a demand for a further democratic vote and that we can work in that to overturn this foolish decision. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Lewis Herbert, who's leader of Cambridge City Council um, and has been a great help to us over the last few weeks in organising our meetings. Okay. We have 9,000 people from the EU who are not UK citizens. Um, they are all members of this community. Many of them have been here 30 years. One of the issues I want our parliamentary colleagues, and I'm sure they will follow it, um, both Heidi Allen and Daniel, uh, who are both united to fight these issues, is to campaign to get an early commitment from Theresa May that our citizens, our EU citizens, can stay. And that there's no uncertainty. <laughs> It would take the Home Office about a hundred years to process all of the applications from the EU citizens who live in the UK. So um, I just think that there isn't a, they aren't a bargaining chip. There isn't anything to be gained from Europe by trying to delay a commitment to them. They are here. They are Cambridge people. The commitment could be given by Theresa May now. Um, our next speaker is from Cambridge Green Party, uh, Sharon Carr, and I'd just like you all to welcome her up to the stage. Um, in years gone by, people will look back at the 48% and say, we fought the good fight. But it's now in our hands to ensure that people in the future also see us as those who ensured that despite the result, we didn't sit and mourn our loss too long, and instead made sure that we created a society worth living in. Okay. 
it would be easy to blame the 52% for making a bad choice, but even in a city seemed to be enlightened, over 15,000 people voted to leave. We cannot ignore that and put it down to ignorance, just as we cannot ignore the rise in hate crime throughout the nation. Even living in Cambridge, I've, been, I've seen a rise since the referendum in the amount of people that ask me if I was born in this country as if to decide whether or not I was worth um, something. What we can do and must do now is to make sure that we are more proactive in creating our future. We must demand the protection of free movement within the EU, stronger environmental protections, workers' rights and the single market. We must demand a referendum on the terms of the final deal and we must demand the protection of young people's futures. We must stand up against racism and xenophobia wherever it occurs and we must also not create further divide in our society by blaming and putting down those who voted out. Thank you Sharon. Um, is Guy Aurora Costa here? Um, ah, hello. Um, I'd like to welcome Guy to the stage now uh, to speak about LGBT issues and the EU. strong record of advocating for LGBT rights. It was the EU that outlawed discrimination on grounds of sexual orientation back in 2000. And the European Court of Justice which told countries that offer civil unions that they must give gay people all the same rights as married couples. <laughs> However, EU states have different laws when it comes to any greater protection. This includes same-sex marriage and adoption by same-sex couples. Staying inside the EU is a strong show of solidarity with gay people across the EU. But it is also a costly way of achieving change. The simple fact is that gay people in these countries have, are more likely to see their rights protected by EU-wide legislation by, than by their own national government. And by keeping Britain in the EU, we can be an active voice for reaching equality in these countries. In 18 out of 28 states, gay marriage is illegal, and in 15 out of 28 states, adoption by same-sex couples is still illegal in the EU. By leaving the EU and handing the power over to Brexit, we are turning our back on the LGBT community in these countries. So I urge you to stand with Remain to fight for the rights of the LGBT community. Um, our next speaker is Sam Owens, who runs Thirsty Cambridge, um, which is, I think, I believe, in Chesterton area. And um, he will give the small business person's uh, perspective on uh, Brexit and what it might mean for the UK. Hello. Um, I, I buy and sell booze for a living. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> And when I buy booze from other countries in the European Union, it's really, really easy. <laughs> when I buy booze from countries that is outside the European Union, it is not very easy. I think there's a point in there somewhere. <laughs> when I sell booze inside the European Union, it's really easy. <laughs> When I sell booze to Switzerland, that amazing country that the uh, Brexiteers hold up as this sort of manna from heaven, guess what? It's a ball ache. <laughs> so, all I would say is from the rapacious businessman's perspective, <laughs> stuff is going to get more expensive and it's not because I'm saving up for my villa in Barbados it's, gonna, it's just going to get more expensive 
Obviously, the currency has taken a bit of a plunge. That doesn't help when you're buying stuff. But that is what is going to happen. So that really would just be my simple point. Stuff is going to get more expensive because it's going to get more complicated to do business. Thank you very much. And if you want to come and have a nice drink, Thursday on Chesterton Road. Lots of European wines and beers. Uh, thank you, Sam. I think we're all going to have to pop in there. Possibly not all at the same time. It could be tricky. Um, our next speaker probably needs no introduction, uh, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. It's um, Julian Huppert, our former MP and uh, a member of the Liberal Democrat Party. Thank you very much. Thank you for all of our respondents organising this. It is a huge, huge amount of effort. And it's great to see so many of you here through the rain, standing, saying how much we care. I'm a proud European citizen, and I want to keep being a European citizen for many, many years to come, and I hope you'll join me in that. Yeah. But friends, we are a poorer country now than we were three months ago. We're poorer financially. The pound's down. We're spending more. And that's awful, particularly because the people who will be the worst hit are those who are already the worst hit by society. They will bear the brunt of Nigel Farage's fantasy. But it's worse than that. We're poor not just financially, but we're poorer as a nation. It's more, it's poorer spiritually, emotionally, morally. We've turned our back on so many good things or at least we will have done if we don't manage to stop it. We've closed the door of opportunity for so many young people, taken away chances they possibly didn't even know they were going to want to have in a few years' time. We didn't give them a say on it, we just ripped their chances away. It is a disgrace. Julian, you lost, just shut up and accept it. No. I'm not going to do that. No, no one here no. is going to do that. None of us should let that happen. We must keep going. It's not over, and even when it is, we should keep saying how we need to get back in, how we are better working elsewhere. I'm still emotional about this. I'm still angry. Are you angry? Yes! Yeah. I'm not... I have to say angry with all the 52%. I'm sad. I'm sad that over decades of neglect, we had let people's lives get to the stage where they thought this was the right thing to do, that they would believe the lies that they were being told. I'm sad that that is what has happened, decade after decade after decade. And there are real problems for some people. There are problems with getting housing. There are problems with finding space at a doctor's surgery. There's problems in schools. So let's build some more houses. Let's expand the schools. Let's make sure the NHS has some money. I'd love the 350 million a week, but it's not gonna happen this way. That was a lie. So I'm sad that they were taken in. We've heard about the hate crime. The 52%, they are not all racists, but all the racists believe most of the country agree with them. That is the harm that's been done. So I'm sad. We should never have had this referendum in the first place. There was no need ever to do this. When I had the great privilege of being the MP here, I fought hard against the plans then to have a referendum because I knew that it would divide the country, that just having the referendum would set people against people, that it would be a distraction for the things that we actually need to do to make people's lives better. say what were the key things that we should insist on as we have Brexit. Now I have a very long list. We should have free movement so it's better for us and it's better for them and it's essential for our businesses, our research, our society. And I've heard from some of the leavers by the way saying the EU is racist, that it means that we can't be decent to people from Syria, from Africa, from Asia. You know what? Let's be decent to Europeans and Africans and Asians. We don't have to decide. Free movement. It's the free market.
market, in goods and services, to make sure we can have an economy that we can deliver. It's workers' rights, it's the environment, it's LGBT, it's everything. In fact, the easiest way to get that package would be simply to stay in the European a long and complicated route, but we need to take action. What I'd like all of you to do is to make sure this won't be a one-off thing. Talk to your friends, your family, wherever they are. Encourage them to contact their friends, their family, so the government doesn't just think they can get away with destroying our hope for the future. Let's make sure we make a difference. When the next general election comes, or the referendum, whichever it is, I suspect a general election, make sure this is a key issue. I've been selected to stand again for Parliament here, and I and my party will be clear. Vote for me, vote for us. We will do everything we can to stay in the European Union or get back in if we've already left through some disaster. Make that matter across the country. Keep the fight going. Thank you very much. Finally, I'd like to thank Lauren and Cecilia for putting Cambridge Days together and getting us all involved and keeping this movement going.